In part eight, we messed with the outliner, set up gateways, and got into megastructures. In the final part of this series, we finish our megastructures, go over planetary ascension, unity ambitions, beat the endgame crisis, and finish the tutorial. Looks like my vassal is beating the empire I was just at war with. Our matter decompressor finished its first stage, so now we should be getting 500 minerals a month. That's insane. However, now we are negative in energy. We'll need to do something about that. Our sentry hub is finished, so we should upgrade it to the next level. Going to place a mega shipyard. This mega structure is from the Federation's DLC. It's going to allow us to build an additional 26 ships at a time. The Strategic Coordination Center is a mega structure that gives us a lot of naval capacity and ship bonuses. This comes from the Megacorp DLC. The Sentry Spire for our Sentry Array has been completed. This allows us to see where all the enemy's fleets are, and most importantly, what kind of weapons they have. The Mega Shipyard site is done. Let's upgrade it. You want to research Ascension Theory as soon as it comes up. This gives us an extra Ascension perk and Unity Ambitions. We can upgrade our Mega Shipyard again. The first stage gives us plus 33 ship build speed. Nice. The Sentry Array is completed. Now we know all and see all. We finished the Domination Tradition Tree and got another perk. We're going to get a second one soon. Time for Galactic Wonders, so we can build the Dyson Sphere now that our Sentry Array is complete. So now we need to research Dyson Sphere before we build it. It will take 56 months. We got another Ascension perk from Ascension Theory. Let's pick Defenders of the Galaxy. This way, when the crisis comes, we'll be ready. Let's research Ringworld. Why not? Think of Ringworlds as giant planets. They come with the Utopia DLC. Dyson Spheres also come with the Utopia DLC, and we just researched it. Let's build a Dyson Sphere right away. Same as any other megastructure except with the Dyson Sphere, you want to choose an uninhabited system. Then click the star in the middle of the system when you zoom in. Now we've finished our mega shipyard. Now we can build 26 ships at a time and get considerable building bonuses. Let's take a look at it. When you have the mega shipyard selected, click the shipyard tab at the bottom to access the shipyard. Let's build a strategic coordination center for more naval capacity and ship bonuses. Build it just like you would any mega structure. We need more naval cap as we have tons of alloys just sitting there in our storage. So we need to pump out more ships and build resource silos which we haven't built yet and build a lot of strongholds. So I built strongholds and silos on almost every planet. I had a thousand naval cap, now I have a whopping 1300 naval capacity. I had just 115,000 resource storage capacity. Now I can store 295,000. All of this is to prepare and get ready for the end game crisis. Let's pump out another fleet. Our Dyson Sphere site is complete. Now we can start building it. Let's begin the upgrade process. Our strategic coordination center site is finished. Let's upgrade that too. Since we have no more tradition trees to adopt, we can start planetary ascension and unity ambitions. We have three really good choices, but by far the best is architectural renaissance, at least until our Dyson Sphere is finished. Will to power is also very good, giving five influence a month. A grand fleet will also be very powerful, giving us 20% naval capacity and ship upkeep reduced by 20%. For now, let's activate architectural renaissance. Faster megastructure build speed, megastructure capacity plus one, and planetary build speed is doubled. So our buildings and districts build twice as fast. Now let's move on to planetary ascension. To do this, simply click on a planet that you want to boost and click upgrade planetary ascension tier. This reduces empire size and increases the bonuses you get from the planetary designation. In this case, generator district build speed and technician output was increased, so more energy overall. A great way to use planetary ascension is to use it on your unity worlds for even more unity for more ascension. 
you can ascend a planet multiple times, or as many times as you have ascension perks. So I have eight ascension perks, so I can upgrade a planet eight times. We built a Dyson Sphere Frame. Now we need to upgrade it. Each time we build it, we get 1,000 energy credits monthly. We built the first stage of the Strategic Coordination Center. Let's upgrade it further. Okay, we got a partial Dyson Sphere. This gives us 1,000 energy credits a month. Let's upgrade it so it produces 2,000. Okay, Strategic Coordination Center Stage 1 is complete. Let's go to Stage 2. I forgot to mention each time you upgrade this, you get plus 4 starbase capacity. So let's make some more starbases and fill them with anchorages. When we reach year 2400 or the set endgame year, we will get a crisis within the next 20 years. Crisis factions are very powerful enemies that are out to cleanse the entire galaxy usually. It is very important that you are prepared by the endgame year, as the crisis will pour tons of enemy fleet power into your galaxy. Okay, the second stage of the Dyson Sphere is complete. Now we are going to upgrade to stage 3 to get 3000 energy credits a month. Now we can really start pumping out fleet power. We're building a Mega R installation site. Should give us some more unity. Our Dyson Sphere is finally complete. 4,000 energy credits a month. We are going to use it most likely. So next, we are going to activate Gram Fleet and Will to Power with all of this extra unity we aren't using. So boost to Fleet Power and Reduction in Ship Upkeep and plus 5 Influence. Next stage of Art Installation complete. On to the next one. It's 2420 and we still haven't got the crisis yet. It's sure taking its sweet time getting here. Finally, the crisis is here. I'm thinking it's the Unbidden. Yep, it's the Unbidden. And they are on the opposite side of the galaxy. Awesome, we got lucky. Sometimes it spawns in your territory, and that sucks. So I probably could just step in and fight it right at their home system before they spread out. But I kind of want to let them spread out to show you what they do. We have 12 fleets. All at 70k fleet power, we should be able to handle them, especially with everyone in the galaxy fighting with us. That's right, the computer AI, even your enemies, will team up with you to fight the endgame crisis. So machine uprisings like this one can happen if you don't give AI full rights. In this case, this happened to one of my vassals. Okay, I've decided to throw everything I have at it because it's time to end this tutorial. You can experience for yourself just how bad this can get if you don't prepare like we have this game. Okay, here we go. This is it. We took some damage, but we rolled them pretty good. We have strength in numbers. Okay, so we defeated the crisis. I know I made it look easy, but again, this is a tutorial and there are many difficulty settings. So if it looks too easy, just keep playing. You'll run into some games where you're not so lucky. And if that's not good enough, by all means, up the difficulty. There's Captain, Commodore, Admiral, and Grand Admiral difficulty. You can also up the Crisis Strength. So whenever you defeat a Crisis, you can get a Relic. Relics are special artifacts that get bonuses depending on what the Relic is. Some Relics are game-changing and very powerful. You can activate them by going to the special screen that pops up once you get one. This is found in the Tradition screen in the Relics tab at the bottom of the window. This Relic is for Jump Drives and Quantum Catapults, but it does give us a passive 30% speed and range to ships, which is really good for our fleet composition. Once you've defeated the Crisis completely, you get a large sum of Unity. So we went over how to start a new game, how to mess with settings, how to set up policies and set up government and trades, we went through our first steps into the galaxy. We went over how to expand and manage economy. We went over vassalization and different specializations. We covered traditions and research, how to colonize planets, how to claim systems, how to survey, how to build and organize planets, how to use the market, edicts funds and how they work, edicts and ambitions, planetary ascension, Dangerous Events, Fleet Management, Combat, Naval Capacity, Influence Generation, Ship Design, 
jobs and managing pops, alien empires, diplomacy, fleet economy, important tech, star bases, vassal agreements, holdings, ascension perks, upgrading ships, terraforming, hyper relays, gateways, hyperlanes, downloadable content like the Overlord DLC and Utopia, admirals, governors, and other leaders, system restriction, anomalies, the situation log, the victory screen, shipyards, piracy, prospectorums, skull arms, strategic resources, ascension paths like engineered evolution and the genetics tradition tree, rolling for tech, species modification, and upgrading buildings, habitats, assessing strength of other empires versus our own, intel, ecumenopolis arcologies, going to war, negotiating peace, winning wars, claiming enemy systems, cloning vats, recruiting armies, invading planets, transport ships, planetary automation, making sectors, the stockpile, megastructures, war exhaustion, reforming government and civic slots, orbital rings, repairing fleets, rebellions, the outliner and outliner settings, outliner organization, Dyson spheres, mega shipyards, strategic coordination centers, matter decompressors, sentry arrays, and facing the crisis. That was a lot of stuff. However, there is still loads upon loads more that I didn't cover in detail. The reason I didn't is because it would take me multiple playthroughs and many more hours of footage to get every nook and cranny. So I may take some stuff I missed and make separate detailed videos on each topic as it comes up. If I miss something, feel free to make a comment. That will tell me what I could cover next in a future video. Also, before you comment, check my videos to make sure I didn't already cover it. This was a lot of work and I may do a condensed version in the future that isn't nearly as long. So stay tuned. We are going to end the tutorial here. Again, thank you so much for watching until the end. If you like my stuff, you know what to do. Thanks and I'll see you next time.